today we are here to kick off the Lista Rusa at the end of the year, like we do every year here on Books Like Whoa. And I always start with the negative because we want to get that out of the way. This is mostly a celebration of all the good things I read this year, and I read a lot of really good things this year. But unfortunately, with the good comes the bad. And frankly, if I'm not reading some bad books, that means I'm not taking enough risks. So today we are going to talk about the biggest disappointments and the worst books. Now I will tell you, Typically, I'm mostly just talking about disappointments because, you know, there's a reader for every book, a book for every reader, but I am going to talk about some books that I consider to be the worst, and they were are not the worst for everyone. I know that because there are definitely readers of these books who really love them. But if you have similar taste to me, or if you use me as an opposite, like I have some people who watch me because they're like, books that you hate are books I love, and books I hate are books you love. So I do have a few that I would consider to be bad. I just didn't like them. I don't have a lot of nice things to say about them. And one of them made me genuinely angry in a way that rarely happens. And it made me feel more in tune with my friend Leanna from Leanna's Library because she is a great ranter. Uh, and I usually don't rant because I usually don't have enough, you know, true feelings about the book to kind of work up to a rant. But there was one book this year that genuinely just made me angry and in a visceral way that kind of surprised me. So we will talk about worst alongside disappointments. But let's start with just some disappointments. I had two two and a half stars that I wanted to talk about as disappointments. First of all, The Pallbearers Club by Paul Tremblay. I don't think that this is a bad book, but I do think that this is a book that suffers for the way it was marketed. And the way it's marketed is as sort of a flavor of horror. The premise is supposed to be that there is this club of kids at a school who volunteer as pallbearers at local funeral homes, and lo and behold, they find out that there are vampires, and things ensue from there. That's not really what this book is. I would say that this is really literary fiction with sort of a sousson of vampire suspicion thrown in. And for that, it's okay. And I actually really like the ending, which saved this from being a two star. That's why I gave it a two and a half. But I don't think that this was what I was expecting or wanting. And to me, this reminded me of Garden State, but with self-awareness that there's a manic pixie dream girl and like a, a question about if there's a supernatural element. So that's just not what I wanted from the book. And therefore I think I was pretty disappointed by it. So I don't think this is horrible for what it is. It just wasn't what I came to the book for and therefore it felt disappointing. The other two and a half that I originally gave a three, I got downgraded it to a two and a half. And even now as we're talking about it, I'm like, really, is this a two star? Maybe it's a two star. I think I keep wanting to give it more stars because of how freaking long it was. And therefore I don't want to feel like I wasted my time reading it. But I'm going to say Two Paradise by Hanya Yanagahara. I didn't think was very well done. Like I, it was perfectly fine. I guess, but it was 600 pages. And something that is 600 pages should not just be fine. It should be really, really good, in my opinion. I'm gonna commit that much time to reading a book. I want to be enjoying it. And I thought it was fine. It was just fine, 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 which to me is a B normally. But I think the further I get away from it, the more I resent how much time I spent reading it. So it's literary fiction with a strong speculative element. I don't think the speculative element is particularly interesting or well executed. It does have some themes around family and sort of like cycles of trauma, cycles of dysfunction, whatever. Okay, it, it's okay at doing that. I don't think it's particularly great at it. So I don't know. This was a very mid book. And for how long it was, truly, it should be better than it was, in my opinion. A three star that I found disappointing was Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. And that's because I really was expecting it to be a four, four and a half, five star. I was expecting to absolutely love this book and it was fine. It's a courtroom drama. I think it's a well done version of a courtroom drama for the most part. My issue with this book is that there seems to be some unaddressed ableism towards autistic people in this book. And it made me feel, I kept waiting for it to be discussed because that was part of what the book was doing is it would show different viewpoints and have it be something where you could see different sides of where people were coming from. And I actually quite like that. I like showing different perspectives. And if you're going to have some problematic or however you want to term that, uh, if you're going to have those elements in a book, 
if you discuss them, I think that that's interesting and makes it like a, a worthwhile read. This is the kind of book that I think sets itself up as a book club book, where there's a lot of things to discuss and different viewpoints to consider. So the fact that to me, the ableism was never addressed, felt like an elephant in the room that kept distracting me from the reading experience because I kept waiting for that to be discussed and it just never was, which leads me to believe that it wasn't really intended to be there. And that kind of just overall diminished my enjoyment of that particular book. So that was a disappointment because I was expecting to really, really love it. Two, two stars that I want to mention. One is Nevermind by Edward St. Aubin, which for me just felt like trauma porn. And I know I've said this in other videos, but this was a year of realizing that literary fiction, I have very different experiences, expectations, and tastes with it than I did in my late teens and early 20s when that was like the main thing I read. I just struggle with a lot of literary fiction because especially if it was written in the last 40-ish years, it feels very samey and the sameness of it are things that I don't particularly enjoy. There's a lot of what I would describe as trauma porn in it or just really a very bleak outlook on life and kind of just a character study wallowing in that. And to me, that's just not, there's only so many of those I can read. And there's only so many of them that are done to a level that I think it's worth the pain and suffering to read it. And this is just a great example of one where I don't feel like it was worth how brutal it is for the reader, what you're getting out of it. I don't think the language was particularly excellent. Um, it brought up some, you know, heart wrenching topics around child abuse and, you know, things that are worth discussing or having in art, but I didn't feel like it had a lot of new things to say about that. And therefore for me, it just wasn't worth how grim of an experience it was. The other two star disappointment I was going to mention was Death and the Dancing Footman, which is a classic whodunit mystery from the golden age of detective fiction. And it was ostensibly an isolated closed circle mystery. And I have liked other books in this series from the author to varying degrees. There's a reason why I haven't ever said that I was going to just read this series straight through, but I just, this one did not deliver at all and was so forgettable. And considering that's my favorite trope, that was very disappointing to me because I typically love a story where everybody's stuck together in a house or they're snowed in or they're brained in or whatever. And then people start dying. You got to figure out who done it. This just did not deliver any of the deliciousness of that trope that I enjoy. And then a one and a half star I thought I would mention is Enchanted by Nora Roberts. The reason I put this as a disappointment is just that Nora Roberts is one of my favorite authors and this was just the one of the least satisfying paranormal romances I have ever read. I often say that I don't love what are called paranoras, which are her integration of speculative elements into her romantic fiction. I don't really like the way she does it for the most part. And this was a great example of why I don't like it because the speculative elements were not that great, were very vague and just not compelling. And then I hate it. It's been rare. It's a rare thing that I hate a main character the way I hated the hero in this particular one. He was such a jerk. And I thought by the end of the book, what I put in my review was basically that I wish that this had been the backstory for the female main character leaving his jerky behind and getting with someone who actually valued her. So I just didn't, this is like my least favorite Nora Roberts that I've read fully. I've DNF'd a few of hers, but this is the my least favorite one I've ever read cover to cover. And that was disappointing because I love Nora Roberts. And then three notable DNFs that I feel bad about for some of them. A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, I just found to be very overwrought and emo. And I felt like the writing was just taking itself way too seriously, which I think is fine for YA, but I just am past the point where that's the kind of YA I enjoy. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad book. It just wasn't a book for me, uh, which is why I DNF'd it. And I wouldn't steer anyone away from it necessarily, but I just really did not like the writing. Speaking of not liking the writing, <laughs> The Atlas Six by what is her name? Olivia Blake? Olivia Blake? Oh, I don't understand the hype here because the writing is excruciating to me. She draws out a scene, the way she, it is overwritten that every, every scene has about three times as many p sentences and words in it than it needs to, to communicate tone, character, plot. 
it's just so dripping in overwriting that it I could not. I, I, it is one of those books where I say my eyeballs like rejected it. I was just like, I cannot keep reading this. So perhaps it's an entertaining story, but I could not find the story in the forest of words. And then the one I feel really bad about is Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman, which I am going to chalk up to the fact that I should have just binge read that series when I first read Scythe. I really enjoyed Scythe, but Thunderhead is a very different kind of story. It has political machinations, which I'm into, but I just didn't like the type of story it was as much as I liked the first one. I skipped ahead to the ending. That's a trick I do sometimes when I'm thinking about DNFing something is I skipped ahead to the ending to see if I liked the ending. And it was fine, but I just, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. I think if I had binge read that whole series at one time, I would have liked it better. So I actually haven't even unhauled, I should go, I should have dug it up so I could show it to you, but I haven't unhauled Thunderhead or The Toll because I'm not yet abandoning hope that maybe I'll get it in my mood or whatever to do a full reread of Scythe and read them back to back to back. But I just lost momentum with the series and that's why I ended up DNFing it. Okay, so those were the disappointments. Now we're gonna talk about what I consider to be the worst. The first one, I don't think many people know or care about, so we'll just get through that quickly. I also DNF'd it, but The Dark Side of the Road by Simon Green. This is another isolated close circle thriller mystery thing that I picked up. Uh, I love that trope and I could not continue on because the main character was such an insufferable asshat. I can't, I can't even tell you how much I dislike this main character. And I'm fine with an unlike, you know, I like plenty of books where the main point of view characters are not great people or not likable, but this was just, he was such a mansplaining P.O.S. I just could not continue. I was like, I don't care about you or what happens to you. It was also taking way too long for someone to die, which is a weird thing to say. But in that kind of book, you want, you know, you want some bodies dropping on the floor. You want, in the early part of these kinds of books, the job of the writer is to keep enough tension going that you'll wait for the body. And I couldn't be bothered, so I DNF'd. The next two books I read for a reading divisive book vlog that I did where there are very polar opinions on a book. Some people love them, some people hate them, and I was reading to see, oh, actually that's not true for both of this. That's just true for the first one, sorry. Okay, for the first one, I was reading it to see where I fell on the divide. Oh, I read actually The Atlas Six was the other part of that divisive vlog and I didn't like it, I DNF'd it. The one that I liked was Sorcery of Thorns and the one that I strongly disliked and would put on a worse list is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Listen, I like The Silent Patient. I know some people hated it because they felt like it was too contrived or whatever. I went with it. I thought it was a well done version of what it was. Like it was an interesting, compelling thriller. I had a good time with it. I don't think it was like life changing, but I had fun with it. This one just pissed me off because the writing I hated. It was every, who it was, it's a thing that sometimes writers do to try to keep momentum going. And if they have enough narrative tension aside from this trick, it can kind of like take that tension up a notch. But in my opinion, there was not enough tension in the story. So to me, it just felt like melodramatic and annoying, which was like, it was these short two to four page chapters and the end of every chapter was a dun dun dun, like that was the tone. It would be like, and then I walked into the room and I saw that he was there in chapter. And then you're supposed to be like, oh, who's there? And you go to the next chapter. Like I said, if you have enough narrative tension going on besides this little trick, it is an effective way to keep people going. But the, mm -hmm, there was nothing tense about this because it was just a pile of nonsense. I thought that it was sold as sort of a serial killer, whatever. And the reasons for the serial killing are it just asinine. There's no reason for our main character to be in on the action. The main character routinely makes like the worst possible decisions. And I can, I can get down with that. Like, so for instance, in her little secrets, I read that this year and liked it. It's framed as the character should know better and she just can't 
help herself from her impulse to try to cover up things. But she's smart and she's has some level, it's clear that the author and the character knows, like, God, I'm making bad decisions, but I just can't seem to help myself. I can get down with that. This was like, I don't think the author or the character realized what an idiot the character was being. And that was annoying to me. It got some momentum in the later part of the book. And I was like, okay, this is turning around. Like, I, I probably should have the answer to all the ones we have left to talk about. I should have just DNF them, but I saw something. And I was like, okay, you know, it's a quick read. Let's see what happens. And the solution is awful. I hated the solution and it ruined any goodwill that I had in the book up to that point. So anyway, all that to say, I did not like this book. It's not the worst thing I've ever read, but it was one of the worst books of the year and it is not to my taste and I would not recommend it to people who have similar tastes in thriller to me. The other one and a half star book that I thought I read in the same vlog, but I didn't, I read it in a different vlog. I read it in a Goodreads. They did like a mystery set and all of these different settings list and I was reading a book from each of the settings and so I read the cartographers as one set in a library. First of all I think that that's not really the tone of the book so I think that's a little bit of a misrepresentation but my problem with the cartographers is that it was so stupid <laughs> by the end in my opinion. The and I don't want to spoil it, but basically there is some level of a speculative element to this mystery. And the speculative element idea is so cool, which is why I kept reading it. So I was like, this should be a conspiracy type thriller. And this is a really cool idea. Basically, people are dying seemingly to get a hold of this map. And we are trying to figure out why they are doing that. And the thought like the general direction of why is really cool. And the general like woo woo promise of the premise is a cool idea. But the way it is executed is so frustrating because there are plot holes that you can just drive a semi truck through. And normally I'm not super picky about that because my theory is that if you are thinking about plot holes, the book has already lost you. A good book will get you to suspend disbelief and just roll with it. If you are thinking about it, it means the book has already failed to sufficiently capture your attention and imagination. And I could not ignore just how stupid some of the contrivances in this book were, in my opinion. It did not make sense. It was very frustrating because there was a lot of potential there, a lot of promise there, and it just felt like the author completely did not do what she could have done with such a cool setup. I think that's why it made me kind of mad because <laughs> I was like, there is something here and it just was very poorly executed in my opinion. But I gave it that half star because there was something there. Our final book is the worst book of the year and the book that made me really mad. And it's been a while since I've gotten mad about a book like this. So I should say that there are plenty of people who like this book and that is fine. I also should say I cannot fully describe why this book infuriated me because it's the ending and I don't want to spoil it for people who still want to read it. But this was my first time reading a book from this author, even though I've had several books on my TBR from the author in the past. And in fact, this made me go back and DNF Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I read the first 50 pages and was like, yep, still hate the writing. And then I flashed to the ending to see if I would like the ending better. I was like, nope, I freaking hate the ending of this too. So I DNF this and my biggest disappointment of the year, bar none, is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I hate this book. There's very, this would make one of my worst books of all time lists because this has an ending. I cannot begin to describe to you how much I hate it. It's in the same category of endings that I literally use as an example of cliches that you should never ever do at this point. And she did it and I hated it so much. I hate, and up until that point, I was like, I don't like the writing. The writing I think is really overwrought and melodramatic, which as you're seeing this as a theme is something I've realized very concretely this year. I don't like, I don't like it when authors are trying to like be a actor, like it's a, this is not ha Hamlet. Okay, like calm down. For me, that's not a tone of writing I really like. She had that and I was like, okay, I don't like this, but you know what? This is mostly delivering to me, as we've discussed, one of my all time favorite tropes, which is the isolated close circle mystery. It's not my favorite version of it, but I'm ha Mara's usually decently happy if you're giving me that trope, even if it's not a great version of it. And then the ending, and I was just like, I 
I hate this. I, it made me so viscerally mad and I felt insulted by it and I hated it so much. So anyway, I know other people really like this book this year. And I think if that particular ending, you don't hate the way I do, you probably would either, oh, and if you like the writing better, frankly, you probably could have a fun time in this. But if you have a similar taste to me in mystery thriller, and there's no way for me to warn you about the ending without spoiling it, so I'm not going to do that. But if you also don't like that ending, then don't read this book and it's, it's an affront to me and I am very happy that I've filmed this video and I can now unhaul it. So those were the worst slash most disappointing books of the year. Uh, I had more to talk about this year, but I think that was good. I was getting to a lot of my backlist TBR this year and I was taking, I think, more risks than I have in the last couple of years of trying things that other people were talking about and enjoying, even if I wasn't completely sure that I would like it. So to me, this is actually, I think, a mark of success that I, I took enough risks this year and these were just some of the misses in those risks. So can't win them all but I'm happy overall still with my overall reading year. And I do have a lot of great books to talk to you guys about in my best of lists, which you guys will be seeing over the next few weeks. My favorites of the different genres since I read pretty much most genres and I just read a lot. I think I'll probably hit 300 books this year. So I like doing all these lists and I hope you guys will come along for the ride. So, I think that will do it for me. Let me know what some of your least favorite books of the year were, and let me know what you thought about any of the books that I talked about. I'm sure you can find some defenders of these books in the comments, so go check that out if you wanna hear another perspective. So yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon.